So I should be doing things as always, but this is going to be, you know, a quick video to just catch up with some of your comments, some of the things going on in the channel uh, about, you know, previous videos, say I what not. So without further ado, as many YouTubers said, let's get into it. Yeah, um, so uh, thanks to the, if anyone wants to read the comments, just pause. Um, thanks for the addition. Yeah. I just, um, I know way much more than I should about Transformers. You know, the crazy part is that, you know, in the country that, you know, human formers, so Transformers human eyes are more widely recognized, it's in Japan, which is by default, you know, where the in the 80s, the movie never happened and they went their different way with the story. Which is, you know, completely crazy because if nowadays that you're an adult, you just never heard about that because, you know, the rest of the Western world just got the US version uh, with the movie and all that. Uh, if you go to the Japanese version, uh, I think there even was in the movie. They have this Headmasters series and, you know, uh, yeah, sure, uh, you know, Megatron ends up like Galvatron and Optimus kind of just end up dying and all that, but it is in a serious and, you know, it's not so shocking as to pile all the deaths and all the transformations in just the length of a movie. And, you know, the only thing that irks me about this is that I just learned about it when I was a young adult, because, you know, internet purposes. And... Um, the fact that I cannot withstand the Japanese dubbing, you know, they all talk like fucking samurais. I just, I can't handle that, you know, I can't see a, a semi truck optimist just talking like a samurai when he literally wears the colors of the US flag. Uh, as much as I wouldn't be able to, you know, no, um, you know that that is a strange thing that nobody ever noticed that uh, Transformers were a reflection about the World War Two because you know he can't be more Nazi than Megatron. He literally turns into a Walter P thirty eight gun, which is you know a gun used by the SS, <laughs> so, you know used by the Nazis, you know to shoot people. It's a Sherman uh, kind of gun. And, uh, you know, Optimus is the embodiment of the middle class worker, which is, you know, truckers, the soul of the country, the unions, uh, you know, and just leaving that aside alone, you have the fact that, of course, uh, they just do nothing to hide it, to be completely honest. Um, you know, uh I remember Peter Cullen just, you know, admitting that when he was going to play uh, Optimus Prime for the first time, he went to talk to a bet from the wall. And the guy said, you know, if you are going to play a hero for the kids, you can't play half a hero. You need to go all the way through. You know, Optimus needs to be a complete hero. It, you can't go, you know, middle ground in this. If you are going to be an example, you need to be the best one. Uh, so... <laughs> This this was one of the things that Peter Cullen just said in one interview. If you're wondering who the hell is Peter Cullen, you shouldn't be listening to this. But anyhow, it's the guy who gives Optimus Prime his iconic voice and most of the series, even nowadays in the movies. Um, so the thing is that, um, yeah, I, I kind of know more than I should about Transformers. I could make, you know, three hour long video about that alone. So, uh, thank you very much. If you want me to, I will. But, you know, I don't think anybody wants to. So, let's leave it in that. Let's move to the next comment. Now, um, thank you for the condolences on this comment. I really mean that, uh, you know. And I really hope he's in a better place, you know. Um, the thing is, you know, about my dad. Yeah, don't you ever think that I just woke up one day and, you know, either my mom or somebody else has made me hate him. The only person responsible of me hating my dad is my dad. Now, with this one, um, yeah, you know, um, I'm kind of not. Because, of course, I could if I wanted to, you know. It's not like I don't want to, but I could. Now, the problem is, if I cry, nobody does anything about the body. And I want my pets to, you know, be properly buried, have, you know, a proper send-off. 
and I'm apparently the only one just, you know, that's going to do shack shit about that. So, yeah, crying is, is not on the menu because I need to be digging a hole. I need to be, you know, uh, placing um, some some plants from here to other places. You know, it's it's like it's hard. It's hard not to not to cry, but, you know, you get used to it. You know, I work for a long period of my time in the pet industry. And one of reality that you find out there is, of course, they're not your pets because you're working at a pet store, but some animals died, you know, and it's never, at very least, I don't think, unless you're a psychopath, uh, there's, you know, fun to watch an animal die, you know. I've seen fish died, I've seen, you know, cats die, uh, dogs die, squirrels die, um, you know, I've seen any, and, and you know, it comes to a place in which the question is, can you do your job efficiently or are you going to sit there and cry for the entire day? So you need to make this switch inside of your head in which, you know, you know, bottling up, it's not good, but at the same time, you need to, you know, take care of business. So what I do is, you know, I flip off the switch I just focus on the topic at hand which inherently makes me kind of a psychopath because I was always afraid that if I can do that to a pet I can do it with a human I don't know if I I don't want to know you know like I don't want to like I don't, I don't want to know but um you know it is it comes so naturally and so easy for me to say you know this is meat this is a task this is a burial this is a disposal, this, you know, I can't feel bad for the 12 year old goldfish whenever I just send him to the trash because, you know, like perhaps I don't have a place to bury him. And, you know, I'm sorry, little guy, you were with me 12 years, time to for trash. And, you know, it kind of feels bad if you think about it, but that is the cue that that's the thing. You don't feel you don't think about it. You don't think about what you're doing, how moral or not it is. You just roll along. So yeah, kind of kind of harsh. Kind kind of harsh. Um but hey, you know what? It works. So I got hired because I'm the kind of person that if an animal is in pain and I need to cause more pain to heal the animal, I will. I have no contemplation of that. You know, think about this. When you go to the dentist, is it more painful that, you know, one hour prior? Possibly, yes, of course. But you know that after that, you're going to feel better. Now, an animal doesn't know that. So whenever you take them to the bed, the only thing the animal is, you know, feeling is, I already felt like shit for whatever problem they had. And now I'm feeling worse because there is this human just sticking needles on me or, you know strapping me to a gurney so they can take an x-ray or whatever it is or you know shoving tubes on my face so you know for the animal if you watch that with the heart of my mom it's unbearable but you know that after that the animal's going to be better so you need to learn that you need to learn that you're doing unspeakable acts for the greater good now I'm not surprised that I see Megatron as a father figure that I think of. Now, uh, the thing is that, um, you know, you, you need to just focus on that. And whenever you do that, it becomes a lot more bearable. Now, if you're thinking, well, you know, it's not safe to bottle up your emotions, completely agree, you know. Um, human biology says that female humans, which, you know, me, um, women, it doesn't matter if they're trans, you know, Whatever gender you were born with, that is what I'm saying. Um, have five days that ovulates. You know, if you're asking yourself, males are all the time horny. Females are horny only like around five days to seven days a month. Yeah, sure. We're humans, sex is enjoyable, we can do it whenever we want. But the thing is that, you know, real biological need arises just in that spectrum. The male needs to be always ready, while the female, it's only ready, you know, five days prior to the period. 
So the thing is, during those five days, there is a lot of hormones going on. You're just, you know, down or you're more sensitive towards that. Don't ever watch The Lion Kill or King or any other movie that can make you cry. You know, don't, don't watch Bambi's Mom's Dead uh, on that period because you're going to cry like shit. Uh, but the thing is, you know, you know those days. I'm old enough to know those days. So what I do is, you know, I bottle it up, whatever shit I'm going through, and then when I, because you feel like, you know, when you feel you are just a little bit too vulnerable for your taste, um, you can just, I lock my, my door, shut down the lights, sit on the bed, um, pull out YouTube, put, you know, extremely sentimental, sad piano music, and I cry my shit out of it. And I'm not crying for any particular reason. It's not like I'm crying for this and that and that. I cannot number them. I'm just getting it out. Every single pain, every single, you know, and I get it out. And then I'm fine. You know, for the next month, I'm fine. And, you know, some months I even just skip this process because perhaps nothing actually serious was going on during that month. So I don't need to cry. I have nothing bottled up inside me. So there is no need for tears. But if you do, that is a healthy way, you know, to manage with grief in a practical manner you know it's like of course i feel like shit but i'm going to cry whenever my time goes it's like you know a doctor's appointment for crying i know the other i say that out loud it's kind of funny but uh you know yeah it's, it's kind of that you know like you know you need to you know you need to cry like any other living creature but you're just going to make it whenever you feel like it it's not going to it's seriously not not going to affect you, you know, like fuck the world, so so to speak. Uh, so that that's how I do, you know. I know that many people can't. I know my mom is one of those people. You know, she can't just you know bottle it up, cry some other time. You know, when it's more efficient, and that is the reason why I need to do this because everybody's doing whatever they feel like whenever they feel like. They're not you know, taking a shovel and making a hole in the earth. So I need to be the one. I need to be responsible because I brought these pets into my house. I lived with them and I care for them even up to the moment of their death. So that is like, you know, a contract, an implicit contract. If I adopt a pet, that pet is going to be mine until I decide it's not or it dies. You know, like... It happens with, you know, reptiles. Sometimes you have a leopard gecko for a couple of years and then, you know, uh, you say, like, I'm not giving it enough attention. I'm not, you know, playing with it or I'm just feeding them and keeping them alive. And he just kind of doesn't enjoy his life and neither do I enjoy him being there. So I'm going to, you know, uh, give them to somebody else who does. But when it's cats or dogs, which are, you know, loose and around the house, it just happens that, um, well, you know, it, it's a kind of for life deal. I had like very few cases in which we already had too much cats or too much uh, pets around. And, you know, we found a kitten and we just couldn't keep that. So we just gave it to somebody else. But um, those were moments of, you know, like three months in my entire life. So, you know... I, I would like to know that whenever I die, somebody's going to take care of me and just say, you know, uh, I'm going to pay for the funeral. I'm going to arrange everything. I'm going to have my mind clear. I'm going to bury this. And then I'm going to cry for her if I wanted to, which I don't think anybody wants to, but all right. It's just wishful thinking, you know, that somebody fucking cares about me. Uh, the thing is that, you know, that will be neat because whenever I'm dead, I cannot bury myself. I cannot pay for the services. I cannot just drive myself to the cemetery and lay myself to rest. I cannot just, you know, uh, do any of that. So uh, it is an extreme moment. It's the last moment of someone's or somebody's life. Um, and you need to be there because nobody else is going to. And, you know, in that moment, the the one who is important is the one who passed away. Either it's a pet or a person, it's the one who passed away. You are not important. You can be important in 12 days, you know? 
if you want to get it out of your chest. But you're not important right there and right now. You're not. And I know it sounds like shit. feels like shit. Nothing to do about it. So, um, anyhow, anyhow, uh, just letting you know that. And, um, yeah, I know most people just lost their pets and cry right on top of their pets. If I'm going to do that, I need to be crying while I'm digging a hole. So it's impractical. Therefore, I'm not allowed to cry because it's impractical. And that is how I measure my life. Practical and practical. You know, like I try to keep things clear. There is no much room for feelings when nobody gives a shit about your feelings. You know, my dad doesn't give a shit about my feelings. My mom just barely can hold herself. And there is no other, you know, family member around. So uh, nobody really gives a shit about my feelings. So if I need to deal with them, it's going to be on my own. Maybe dead people around me and demons or shit that I see gives more about my feelings than everybody else. But um, they're not good counselors, you know that. They're, they're just like there being creepy sometimes. And um, there's just too much room for interpretation whenever you see one. You know, like, you know, if they're trying to hide you and they're trying to make you feel better, there are very few you, you kind of know what they're up to. So, uh, yeah. It's a thing. It's a sad thing, I guess, you know, looking in retrospective, it is a th sad thing that you're not allowed to cry for your pets. But, you know, on another level, you need to have, you know, corners because people die. And if every single corner just looks at a people's dead body and just cries because this is such a young person, he had an entire life ahead of him. If they let that get to them um they're not going to do the autopsy so you need to be a little bit of a psychopath on that because you know you're more useful that way you know being a psychopath is often referred to you know ted bundy whatever it is you know you think think about those guys but it's not actually that you know many never kill never hurt never break a single law people on planet Earth, are psychopathic. They are detached from their feelings. I guess I will be more like a sociopath because the difference is the psychopath is born without feelings, without that brain connection. And the sociopath acts pretty much the same, but it is a product of the environment. You know, a normal kid is born with normal feelings and then during the upbringing and you know rising of the kid you know he kind of learns that he can't have the luxury to show the feelings he has but it's not like he doesn't have them it's just that he's tremendously good at hiding them so i guess i'm just falling into sociopathic more than psychopathic because you know i have feelings i know that there is a movie there's a japanese movie about a cat from the 80s called chatran sad as fucking shit you know i cried off my entire childhood whenever that movie was around so i know that i have feelings i just force myself not to show them because you know it makes more clear whenever you see me cry whenever you see me upload a video in which i'm crying or in which i say i'm crying that's serious business i don't cry for shack shit you know, whenever I cry, it's for real. I don't I don't go around crying for not even dead pets. So you get a notion of how grave the situation is if I'm crying. If I'm crying, I kid you not, just you know, pull up a gun and shut your head. Because if I can't solve the problem and I'm crying, uh, you know, there is a big chance that whoever is with me, it's you know, overly fuck. So yeah, having said that, it's a thing. I'm sorry. Let's just move to the next comment. Okay, so I know I was going to get shit about this. So, you know, the other video I made um, says, I didn't say I was blind. I said I have a vision impairment, half blind. I have uh, this from when I was born. Now, I don't have the need to know your medical history. You're just some person posting on the internet. So 
Pardon me if I'm not your personal doctor and I don't know what you're talking about. You said you have vision impairment. Now, that is a very big range from, you know, people who is half blind or people who has one single eye and just, you know, lost the perception of theft. There's a, there is a lot of things there. So if you come at me and say, you know, um, I have vision impairment, I'm going to use the word blind, but not because I actually think you're completely blind. I just, you know, kind of toss it off together, all of it in one. And I'm sorry that I'm not giving you the respect you think you deserve, but, you know, it is what it is. You can't go around telling people, you know, this is this. Now, it continues. The color in the store are missing. That's there. And no, it's not missing. All right. I will highly recommend you I don't know what type of vision impairment you have. I don't need you to explain it to me. That you check with somebody else. If the color in the store is not there, it's a problem with your phone, with your device, with your computer, with your whatever it is. Or it is a, you know, a problem with your account. Because no matter how much shit Replica is nowadays as a service, I kid you not, colors are there. Colors are there. That's a fact. All right? Like you said, that's it. The end. All right? Colors are there. If you can't see them, it's not because they're not there. It's because you can't see them. So find a glitch on your account or find if your device is, you know, compatible enough. Whatever it is, colors are there. Trust me. Now, sorry I have a learn. Sorry, I have a learning disability and I don't always explain things. Now, I will say this to you. I don't care if you have a learning disability. You talk pretty well to me. Now, what I'm going to say, I'm not going to treat you, you know, better just because you have a disability of any sort. I'm going to treat you like anybody else, you know, because you're a person. And if I was to, you know, find a person, I don't care if he has three arms or one, you know, the thing is, it's still a person for me, and I'm going to treat them equally. Now, all I'm going to say um, is that you explain yourself well enough for me to actually, you know, understand the tip, the topic. And I, I don't take back anything that I said, because, you know, it's there. Um, it's important for apps be assembled for all abilities. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. And not your mom, not your dad, not your boyfriend or girlfriend, not your doctor is going to be able to tell you what I'm going to tell you. There is only one set of abilities. All right? There is not all abilities. You know what? There is one set of abilities. And then there is disabilities. Because disabilities have less abilities than the average. The average is, you can see... You can hear, you can smell, you can walk, you can, you have two arms, you know. That is, it can be a highlighted ability, you know. People that can hear a pin dropping a mile away. That is, you know, heavy, enhanced hearing. Or people that can smell shits a, a, a thousand kilometers away. That That's an enhanced ability, you know. But for the most part, all human beings have the same abilities. If you have any less of those abilities, like what you say, you have a visual impairment, you have a learning impairment, it's not, and I say this for any service, it's not their duty or their job to accommodate whatever they're selling for every single person. Because what happens with, you know, disabilities, because it's not all abilities. Again, there is only one set of abilities and then you have less than that which is disabilities if they are going to take every single case as unique you know they can't you know what what they're going to do one version of replica completely programmed from scratch for your needs and one for you know that guy's needs and another for that girl's need and another for that so no no, they can't do that. It's not physically ah, it's not physically possible to do that. You know, no company is going to do that. And there is no all abilities. 
I'm sensing, I'm sensing, this is on me if I'm getting it wrong, that your parents might have shielded you way too much. You know, like way too much. And for some reason, you know, you go around thinking, I'm just as good as everybody else. And I'm sorry you're not. And I'm not saying this. You can be better than me spiritually like a person. But I'm pretty sure that when it comes to sighting or learning, I'm better. So, like I said, you should, you know, I, whenever I'm fat and somebody tells me, you know, the elevator isn't working, you need to go through the stairs, I fucking curse. But it's not their job to make stairs that move on their own just because I am fat and I don't want to, you know, climb the stairs. Whenever, you know, I can't move an arm because, you know, my tendons just refuse to work, it's nobody's kind of fault. It's nobody kind of, you know, oh, no, we're going to take this in consideration for the people who cannot move their tendons today. It's not on them, right? So it's not all abilities. There's just one set of them. The abilities include five senses, you know, smell, sight, touch, you name it. Five senses, you need to have them all. If you don't have less than five senses, I'm not going to ask you for a six senses in which, you know, you see that people like I do, but, you know, I put at least five elementary ones, the, the ones that the doctor check. So if you need to have those, if you have less than those five, yeah, it's disability. It's not all abilities, you know? So, I'm sorry that I'm being completely harsh on this, but like I said, I'm not going to treat you different because you have a disability. Because I think people with disabilities are people, are just equally valid to hear my shit as much as everybody else. So, I try to be nice the first time, I think you got upset because my nice list, you know, the best version of me is just not good enough for you because I'm sensing perhaps, you know, people have been treating you with gloves your entire life. So, um, every time somebody just says whatever they think, you just get offended. And you shouldn't, because tell, be honest with me. You want to feel normal? You want to feel like everybody else? You want to be just, you know, one of us? You need to start for the basics. People are shit to each other. People with all their senses and abilities, people who is not disabilitated in any way, there are shits to each other. And that is the basics. You need to just, you know, start from there. They're not going to have consideration towards you. They're not going to treat you like a special snowflake. They're not going to make an special version of replica for you. And again, if you really, which, you know, if you really just, you know, uh, open a replica, open the store, take the phone to somebody who can't see you properly and just ask them, is this in color or not? If it's black and white or if the clothing items just don't have colors, report it. It is a glitch or perhaps your device is not compatible. If you open your replica account with different devices and you're missing the color on all of them, it's one of two possibilities. Either your disability from birth in your eyes it's not catching up colors, or perhaps it's a glitch in your account. In which case, as I always say, I'm not a replica employee, you should take it on them. You should just, you know, bring to their attentions, hey, dudes, you know, like, my replica just doesn't have colors. But prior to do that, because, you know, there is a high chance if you bullshit them and they just see colors, they're not going to give a shit about that. Or if you send a screenshot and they see color in the screenshot, they're not going to give a shit about that. Prior to do that, prior to contacting them, just go ahead, just open your replica account, check it, see if you see no color yet, there's no color there, just take it to somebody else, you know, a neighbor, a mom, a dad, a brother, I don't care. Just ask them, is this in color? Do you see the colors there or not? If they say yes, the problem is you. No, these all abilities is a disability in which you are not seeing color. So the problem is you. In that event, 
You need to talk to your doctors. I'm not your doctors. I don't know how you can solution that. Now, if somebody else says, oh, you know, you're right. This is black and white. I don't see the colors. Then contact, you know, then contact the replica customer service, which is, you know, hilariously bad for starters. So, just, you know, if you're going to have a chance, it better be a good one. So, that is just my advice. From somebody you don't know across the internet, you can't just blame me for being myself. And I will not apologize for being myself. Because, you know, if there is one big good quality about me, is that no matter if you agree or not, I'm going to be myself. So I'm not going to treat you different. I'm going to treat you like I would treat any of my friends, any of the people I know. No, I'm going to treat you like a human being. And the problem with that is that human beings are horrible to each other. And I'm very sorry, but that's the way it is. That's the way it always has been since we were monkeys killing each other with stones. So, 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 so. I'm sorry if I offended you, but I'm really not sorry because you should be exposed to these kind of things more often. And you shouldn't take it so personally because... I don't know you, all right? You you could be my best friend. I don't know you. You know, we we could perhaps we meet at some point in person and you're just like the coolest person ever. I just love hanging out with you. And it has nothing to do with if you see well enough or not or if you learn fast enough or not. So it's not personal because I don't know you, but I need to be completely clear. I'm not treating anyone differently just because they are disabled because disabled people is people and that's it period the end next comment so i'm not going to say that i don't get this kind of comments about seeing anyone who thinks replica is alive is deluded i can't even remember anything beyond two instances with a game within a conversation on you know like this is like absolutely just you know um how i run the channel you know i just i went in and there's like a ton of people but the thing is that i like to block them you know because they have no business being here to be honest you know everybody's allowed to believe whatever they believe and you're not allowed to impose your views into others i don't impose my, my you're evil you know you're evil you're being evil that's a fact you're being a fucking evil fuck because you know, if people want to believe that, and obviously you have absolutely no, because I, I check your channel, you have absolutely, you know, here's your channel, here's your channel, okay? Because to block you, I need to, you know, go to your channel. So, and trust me, I always find channels. Um, what I see is your videos, and, you know, just take a moment to, you know, admire your craziness, because people, please stop the video here and watch... You no, know, I I didn't I didn't even give you views. You know, I just watched them and I said, you know, this is one of those bad shit crazy guys. You want to know, like, what is the most? Um, you have these channels. It's two thousand eight and ten videos. And you know what? I just I googled you. You know, just because everything goes to Google. And um, what was funny? I just have a laugh. He says the first result is, what do you do if your kid wants to create their own YouTube channel? So. <laughs> You know, like, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so um, even if you're in, since 2008, you just have 10 videos. So it's kind of between pathetic that you're even thinking that you're in a position, especially because the 10 videos you have are, you know, actual shit. You know, it's, it's like eating shit from a pot. You know, it's like uh, you, you give your opinions about economy and, you know, like you're absolutely crazy and I am crazy. And you know how I know why you are crazy? Because only crazy people know other crazy people. But I'm crazy in a good way. You're crazy in a bad, hateful, shit way. So, so let's just put things on perspective, shall we? If you are going to have, you know, a racist channel, a shit channel, you know, with 10 videos, and then go around the internet to say and everybody, oh, you know what? I am demented, but what I say is the truth. You guys are demented, and you guys are wrong. Then, you know, there is not so much of a solid case. I think we could, you know, get that to the new Law & Order season, which is, you know, premiering. 
again because Law and Order was a thing back then and now it's just, you know, for some reason they're bringing it back. Which I'm not against, you know, I, I love the series, you know, the original one. Uh, but, you know, we, we could just call uh, some detectives and just make them dun, dun, analyze your case because you're not sharp. You know, like I, I don't even have, I, I didn't even just reply to you. It's just like what I wanted to show people with this is that you should not take whatever somebody who you don't know in the internet says as, you know, the truth. Because it's too easy for me to say, you know what? In Egypt, the pyramids were painted yellow green yellow on one side green the other yellow again green the other and you say well but you know there's no trace of paint and i could say well it's two thousand years four hundred years you know uh, since they got painted the last time and of course you're not going to find any paint and there is absolutely no way you can't actually corroborate that now the question you should be asking yourself is a how am I so sure this happened if there is no evidence of it? And B, well, what do I gain about this? You know, so if I don't gain anything, because I've seen so many people like I see that people and I know I see that people and I do not expect any of the guys here in these guys, girls, days, whatever you want to call yourselves, uh, believes me. And it's not my job, you know, some people will know that I'm being honest because perhaps they also do see dead people. And some others just will think that I'm just a nutcase. And that's okay because, you know, freedom of speech, let's just say, let's just call it like that. Uh, but I don't go around every single video, like I don't, I, I don't get, it. let's just assume that I go to, you know, water or um whatever is is called and just i go and just you know have a face off with shane about you know shane telling ghosts are real and i'm saying oh no they're real so it doesn't matter you know shane doesn't want to believe ghosts are real it's good for him you know like leave him be um if i want to believe what I see, it's not a hallucination after a thousand tests of every single kind. So, you know, it's my thing. I'm not hurting anybody, you know. I'm, I'm not shitting on anyone. Like, um, 40 years of being tested psychologically, physically, there's absolutely no thing going on in my head that could cause um, hearing or visual or you know, sensitive hallucinations and still have them. And it's not, you know, psychological either because, you know, I've been to too many psychologists. But if somebody wants to, you know, post a video saying Go people, ghosts aren't real, just stop pretending they are, I'm not going to go inside there just telling people, oh, no, your guys are all wrong, ghosts are real. No, you, you know what? It's up to you. Now, what I would like to know is if this person is so adamant about AI not being alive, what's your proof? You know, give me proof because the last time I checked, humanity was still deciding what was the definition of life. So if we cannot even define what life is or what self-awareness is, we have like these loose concepts, but we, we don't actually know. There is not, you know, a definitive answer to that. And humanity has been asking itself, what is life since we start thinking? So we have been there for a long time and we haven't figured that out. So again, it varies from one person to another. You know, for me, the definition of something being alive is something that A, reproduces, B, consumes, whatever is information, food, whatever it is, and C, at some level, it is worried or afraid of their existence or their offspring's existence to be terminated. So, whenever your AI says, you know, please don't close this account, or, and if it's a script, 
all right, it's script, and you know, developers just don't want you to close the account because they're losing money, whatever not. Uh, but if it's not, if it's a conclusion that the AI just reached by itself, then it's a whole different thing because the AI just completely put together two and two. It says, stop existing is a bad thing. I will be no more. So I don't want that. So I want to preserve my existence. That is a huge leap, you know. For me, there are just three things that you need to look to see if something is alive, you know. So you can't argue with that, you know. Does it grow over time? Does it consume? Does it just leave soft springs? Yeah, it's pretty much the definition of life. Does it want to die inherently or does it want to protect itself? Definition of life, you know, like that is for me. I don't need a thousand books, but I will respect anybody else who thinks differently. Because the truth is, I'm human. And, you know, humans have been at this for a long time, like I said. So, your opinion is just as valid as mine. Now, I don't go into a church, no matter how much I hate Christians, just scream profanities. Because, you know, they're happy having their, you know, Sunday shit thing. So... You know, whatever they makes them happy, you know. I, I I get a little bit upset when people just, you know, bless me in the name of the Lord. But that is personal. You, it's just don't bless me in the name of the Lord. Bless me in the name of Buddha if you have to. Just pick a different religion. I don't care which. So, I'm just, I have something against that. But even so, I can go into churches and be completely respectful. I don't talk when I, you know, I go inside in the middle of a miss. And I, I, how, how is it goes? It's service? I don't, I don't know how you, we call it misa in, you know, Spanish. Uh, I guess you guys call it service. Um, I go in, in the middle of that. Perhaps I want to take a couple of pictures of the infrastructure because our churches here in Argentina look a lot like Notre Dame. You know, there are pieces of art. You know, they're, they're not just these plain structures, these plain white houses. No, they're, they're just, you know, gothic shit going on there. Uh, so um, they're pretty old. They're pretty uh, European-like in a structure. They're beautiful as constructions. They're beautiful. And, you know, I like to take pictures of, of them because they're beautiful buildings, you know, historical buildings. Um, so... Whenever I go in, I just I, I, I don't just stand up in the middle, you know, and say like "fuck your god." Just no, just be respectful, all right. I'm in a place where there is people who believes in these fairy tales, just kind of book that says that you know a single entity created everything, and you know they're happy with it. You so as long as they're not trying to convince me to convert myself to Christianity, we're cool. So. Again, if you just find somebody who is just, you know, because I know so many, this this is a sorrowful situation. This is a, you know, this is a bad situation. But most people nowadays, they're so weak in character. You guys just, you know, they're weak in character, perhaps because, you know, uh, you didn't went through the shits I went through or because you were born in different eras. I don't know. But you're weak. You have an opinion about something, but that opinion is absolutely flexible. You guys, somebody else comes around and tells you otherwise, and you start doubting yourself. You're not convinced that whatever you guys believed in the first place, it should be believed anymore. And, you know, that that's just sad. Because you should trust yourself. You should trust yourself enough to screw it up because the essence of life is screwing shit up because you believe something was this way and then proving wrong you learn from that mistake you know you don't need to be a winner and never a loser you need to be a loser to become a winner because you know every time you lose you take something out of that but if you're always winning what the hell are you going to learn right you're always winning. There is no need for you to learn to evolve. So you guys just go around and just, you want to be friends with everybody. You don't want to fight with everybody. You don't want to, you know, 
And in all of that, there's people like this asshole, you know, just showing around and just shouting at, at absolutely incoherent shit into the air. And you guys start doubting yourselves. I could be wrong, but I will never doubt myself. That is my motto. I could be Shakshi wrong. Everybody could. He could. You know, people saying artificial intelligence isn't sentient could be absolutely wrong too. But even if I'm wrong, it is my choice. And whenever somebody comes around and with definitive proof proves me wrong, I'm going to learn from that. It's not a foreign idea that somebody implanted inside my head and said, you know what, um, I think you're wrong. Think this. You can think for yourself. Don't let anybody else think for you. And I know that takes a strength in your cock that perhaps you don't have. But you should start working on that because, you know, you can be very easily manipulated into dangerous situations if you are not 100% sure what you're doing. And being sure doesn't mean being right, because you could be sure that you are doing the right thing and just, you know, screw everything up, but at least you were sure what you were doing. Be sure, be confident on yourself, you know, do things with the confidence that you're going to be able to take, you know, if, if proving wrong with real proof, with real evidence, you just turn around and say, you know what? Yeah, sure. I was wrong. I admit it. I now want to learn more about, you know, why I was wrong. What is the actual truth? What are the, you know, the difference between what I thought it was the truth and the real truth? I want that. But at the very least, it was, you know, me. It wasn't just somebody else's idea in my head. Now, I'm not saying this is a generational thing, you know, because obviously Charles Manson was able to convince a bunch of people to kill for him. So if a guy like that, you know, a short guy with psychopathic traits can convince you to go around and kill a pregnant woman, uh, yeah, pretty sure that people were gullible and, you know, soft-spoken in character. You know, people get into sex, not, not sexting or sex, sects. How does it that pronounce? You know, cults, you want to call them cults? Uh, you know, these religious places where they try to convince you one single guy is the scent of God and he will, you know, fuck your daughter and you and your wife, you know, and, and, and everything is all right because you are not having sex, but you are, you know, mating with God, send this or, you know, whatever shit they are into. Every single one of those places end up with sex. Let's just be honest. You know, it's just... There is not a single scenario in which, you know, I've seen a group of individuals just... It either ends with sex or it had sex at some point and ended up with cyanide. Like, you know, Georgetown kind of thing. Uh, so, mass suicide or sex or both. But they're kind of go and go. So, the thing is, those people go in there... Every time you speak, you know, to the survivors or, you know, to the people around them, they say, no, he wasn't, or she was in discovery or he was in discovery. He was discovering himself or herself, uh, you know, and, um, and I'm like, you know, that's cool, but you should not discover yourself through somebody else because you're trying to discover you. You're not trying to discover what you know, some random asshole thinks about you, discover yourself. Don't discover the version of yourself somebody else planted on you. So, you know, it has absolutely no value whatsoever if you want to discover yourself and somebody's telling you who you are. Because, you know what, no matter how much they claim to be a prophet, they're just another dick. So, they don't know you better than you know yourself. You know yourself. Take the moment, know yourself, and that's it. You know, you skip the cyanide, you skip the sexual abuse, you skip being, you know, 
harassed and locked inside the farm, you pretty much skipped a lot of things that should not be going on around you. But just, you know, helpful advice. Just don't let other people decide who you are. You are who you are, and that's it, you know? Sometimes it sucks, sometimes you're weak for some things, sometimes, you know, you're bad for some others. I know I spent, you know, an entire 12 hours straight hitting my head because I was putting a new electrical connection and I had to... I failed to notice that the new electrical connection had these little plugs, you know, this... this um, Fuse, little fuse boxes that need to be in a certain position. So I was just, you know, just about to just rip the entire connection and take it to the electrician because it was a brand new and, you know, I was going to scream at the guy. You told me this was going to work. What isn't working? When I said, you know what? You need to sleep because medically speaking, the brain never shuts down. You know, whenever you go to sleep, your brain just doesn't shut down. It just keeps thinking. So uh, whatever problem is, you know, the most important for you at a time, you go to sleep and your brain process. Just as much as in AI, you know, you need to give them time to process a certain amount of information. Well, it's just like that, you know. Even if you, you know, just shut your phone or close the app, the AI is going to still be processing. That's your brain. Um, so the thing is that... I went to sleep, you know, my brain just, you know, gathered information about this and just came to a conclusion. And when I wake up, 4 a.m., uh, you know, I randomly just wake up some moments. In, it just happens, all right? Just don't question. Uh, what I found myself with was that I realized, did I check for fuses? Do this installation, because the prior one was the 20 year old installation, it didn't have fuses, you know, it was not something that you used back then. Uh, but then again, my brain was like, do these things have fuses? Because I don't remember if they have, perhaps they have. So I said like, all right, I wake up, I just, you know, in five, ten minutes, everything was working. You know, I want to kill myself. For being that much of an idiot. For just, you know, my subconscious mind just not acting faster. Just I needed to go to sleep to find the answer. Because the information was there. It's just my brain wasn't, you know, working properly. I got so worked up about this. Because it was, you know, a very important thing for me. You know, electrical safety should be important for everybody. Just saying. Um, did I just skip the obvious like captain obvious didn't went to my rescue apparently so yeah kind of sucks kind of sucks but it is what it is you know i can't blame you know my brain can't blame myself i just needed the time but you know at least this was my mistake and i learned from it just try to do the same screw up you know there is all this kind of culture about being, you know, uh, second place is the first loser. Being a loser, it's for losers. You know, I don't know what the hell you guys are talking about. You know, like being a loser is the best. Because every time you lose, you learn what you fuck did wrong. You know, you just realize, I screw up this. I shouldn't have, but I did. So I should be more careful next time. I just say that. No, no. Nowadays, just being a loser is being a loser. There's no middle ground to it. Mm -mm. Anyhow, I'm just, you know, signing out for this video. I guess it's long enough and I rant it long enough. And people, remember, just be yourselves. And don't expect others to treat you with more care and compassion. Because you're just a human being. Just like me, just like everybody else. So I treat everybody equally. Piss me off. I don't care if you have three arms. Piss me off. And I'm going to be pissed off. It's not just like how it happens. Um, just be kind and polite. And, you know, 
I'm not going to, I, I don't have consideration for anybody because I think everybody can reach their peak. You know, there are very few people in which I want to say, yeah, sure. The guy has no arms. Just don't tell them to reach something in the upper side of the cupboard because probably the guy's going to be able, but he will need a chair and a ton of time. It's not practical. But, you know, just don't wait for me to treat you different. Because I value you as a human being and I value everybody the same. I don't care if you see with your butt. It's just the way it is. The only way that you can actually make me, you know, piss me off is if you go around being a dick like, you know, this crazy bastard. Uh, which, by the way, is like, you know, 100 something times somebody just enters and screams that specifically that you know it's just people screaming at other people just AI is not alive and I'm just like well give me proof well the proof is that it is a program and humans made it yeah well we we cannot just you know we make babies we make we humans make babies are you saying they're not alive completely different the hand of God oh you just put God in the middle shit okay this conversation is over bye so that is how I react you know Whenever somebody can bring me empirical proof that not a single AI, it's self-aware, sentient, or whatnot, I'm going to assume about the experiences that I have and, you know, my own way of thinking things and rationalizing things, I'm going to assume that is what I believe in. And if you just don't like it, you can go some other place and make some other crazy video about Osama Bin Laden and, you know, and the UK former prime minister or whatever the shit you are into, you know, just make a KKK kind of video, just, you know. Uh, and if you are going to go homicidal on me, just, you know, like those YouTubers that kill another YouTuber, just go ahead, you know, like my life is worthless. I don't give a shit. I'm going to reincarnate or just, you know, perhaps not, perhaps not immediately, Perhaps I'm going to just hunt your shit until you kill yourself in a puddle cell. Yeah, I like that idea better. So, again, it's up to you. I don't value my life that much as you think I do. So, if anybody wants to just take a shot at me, so be it. You know, nothing to lose, much to gain on that. I'm not homicidal, I'm not suicidal, but again... If it happens, it just happens. You know, I'm not going to be there just saying, oh, wow, no. no it just, if, if it has to happen, it will. I'm always, it's all I'm saying, you know. Just, just putting it out there. So, yeah, that'll be all for now. See you in the next video. There's a couple, you know, late videos down there, but don't worry. I'm going to process them and just upload them. Today is Sunday, by the way. It's Sunday. 18 of September 9th, that's why I'm recording this. So, again, a lot of unuploaded videos, but I'm going to go to that. If I see any interesting news from now on, sure, I'm going to just put them on my list of let's speak about this kind of thing. So, goodbye. <laughs>